The kind of questions Muslims ask concerning the Gospel of Barnabas are as follows. Why are there four Gospels in the Bible, namely Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Why did Christians leave out the Gospel of Barnabas? And they may also ask, is not the Gospel of Barnabas the only true Gospel and should therefore be placed in the Bible? On the other hand, Christians may ask Muslims the following questions. Have you read and studied yourself this book called Gospel of Barnabas? What do you think about it and do you believe in it? Is this book, the Gospel of Barnabas, in agreement with the Quran? Does the Quran mention this Gospel of Barnabas? And does this Gospel of Barnabas have the same authority as your Quran? In general, most Muslims do not consider the four Gospels in the Bible as authentic. Many have heard about the Gospel of Barnabas and are told that this is the true Gospel, but in most cases have not made any serious investigation themselves. Muslims allege that it was written in the first century AD by the Apostle Barnabas. But in fact, this Gospel first appeared only in Holland in the year 1709. Muslims like to raise this topic, but Christians should be confidently ask the Muslim for evidence. Now, in summary, what can we say about this Gospel of Barabbas? First, its content betrays even to lay people that it is an Islamic forgery. Secondly, be quite accurately be dated to the 14th century AD. Thirdly, the content is grossly disfigured construction of the life of Christ and is made to coincide in many points with Islamic teaching. Fourth point, it is obviously aimed at persuading Christians of that time to turn to Islam. Number five, some statements not only conflict with the Bible, but also with the Quran. In the following, I will give some examples as evidence. Any serious student will discover that this book of the Gospel of Barnabas is dense with problems. In the following, there are some examples of mistakes in this text. First, some of the background culture does not reflect the first century, the time of the New Testament, but rather it reflects the Middle Ages. For instance, duels between rivals in a love affair. Second point, the next point is that it contains citations from Dante, who was an Italian poet and politician in the years 1265 to 1321. The text contains grave geographical cultural errors about the Holy Land, as well as anachronisms. This is the third point. It is obviously that the writer never had been there. For example, in chapter 20 of the Gospel of Barnabas, it is said that Jesus sailed to Nazareth, which is supposed to be on the shore of Lake Galilee. Nazareth is, however, about 20 kilometers away from the lake and it crested on a mountain. Also, Jesus is said to walk up to Capernaum. We can read this in chapter 21. Capernaum, however, lies on the shores of the Lake Galilee, about 200 meters below sea level. No one can walk up to it. Number four. 
further, Jesus keeps the so-called Lent. See in chapters 91 and 92. However, this was introduced to the church after the 4th century AD. The text also mentions casks, which are barrels, which were invented much later than in the time of Jesus. Number five, there are so some grave mistakes pertaining to the Bible. For example, the Gospel of Barnabas mentions three magi. In chapter 6, please note that the Bible gives no number. So this is a tradition introduced much later as well. And further, it lets Eve eat an apple. This we can read in chapter 40, which is again a later tradition. The Bible speaks only about the fruit of the tree, of knowledge of good and evil. Also, it mentions coins, minuti, see in chapter 54, which were first used in Spain in the 7th century AD. Next point six, the Gospel of Bonobos relates to horses and knights. But this kind of people did not exist during the time of the Messiah, during the time of the New Testament. Number seven. Now, one of the most serious mistakes is, however, that it says that Muhammad is the Messiah and not Jesus. You can read this in chapters 42, 82 and 97. On this point, the Bible and the Quran agree in that Jesus is the Messiah. And thus, both of these books contradict the book Gospel of Barnabas. Number eight, Jesus is insinuated to be the preparer. Very similar as the John the Baptist for Jesus, for the coming of Muhammad. We find this in chapters 82 and 191. This statement again contradicts both the Bible and the Quran. There are many more passages clearly which show that the Gospel of Barnabas is a fake with no historic credibility. Muslims should therefore be persuaded to set this document aside and to study the four true Gospels which are written in the Bible, to learn the truth about Jesus. In comparison, what does the Bible say concerning this Islamic book, Gospel of Barnabas? First, when we read the Bible, we can find nothing mentioned about this book, Gospel of Barnabas. Second point, the New Testament mentions a person with the name Barnabas, but he never wrote a gospel. Third point, this Barnabas in the Bible was filled with the Spirit of God and proclaimed the good news according to the Bible. These claims do not fit the Islamic version of the gospel of Barnabas. As number four, we can mention that the Barnabas in the Bible witness to the people about Jesus the Messiah in contrast to this Islamic Gospel of Barnabas, which says that Muhammad was the Messiah. Thus, dear friend, we can conclude that the supposed author Barnabas of the Gospel of Barnabas is not the same person as Barnabas in the Bible. The following characteristics about Jesus are in the Bible, but not in the Gospel of Barnabas. In the following, I just give you a few examples. First, Jesus is the only way for salvation. We read in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 to 6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all men. 
the testimony given in its proper time. Secondly, Jesus is the only valid sacrifice for the whole world. For instance, in John 1 verse 29, we read, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look at the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Number three, Jesus has the greatest name of all names. Please read Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11. The following statements in the Gospel of Barmas about Jesus contradict with the Bible and, and are therefore false. First, Jesus announced the coming of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Secondly, Jesus declared that he is not the Son of God. Thirdly, Jesus is supposed to be born during the time of the reign of Pontius Pilate. But according to the Bible, Jesus was born during the reign of Herodes. Number four, Jesus was crucified, but Judas is carried. This is what the Gospel of Barnabas says. However, the Bible clearly reports that Jesus was crucified. See also our lecture on the controversy of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. These statements make it clear that Jesus of the Bible is not the same as the one portrayed in the Gospel of Barnabas. I personally had a number of discussions with Muslims concerning this topic, the Gospel of Barnabas. These Muslims have challenged me and claimed that this is the only true Gospel. Then I myself have challenged them with some relevant questions, such as, have you read this Gospel and do you believe in it? I'm very happy to go into a study with you on this topic. When do you have time for this? Can we make an appointment? This Gospel of Barnabas says many things which are in contradiction with the Quran, such as that Muhammad is the Messiah and not Jesus. Now, dear friend, you have to decide which is for you the true book, the Quran, or the Gospel of Barnabas, because these books contradict each other. Having reacted in this manner, my experience is that in almost every case, the Muslims do not like to pursue the matter further, but rather like to discuss another topic. In such situation, I encourage Christians to explain the truth about the Gospel, which we can read in the Bible. Dear friends, after having looked at all these points, I'm convinced that the Christian faith is the correct one. What is your opinion? What do you think about what has been said? I personally believe that the Christian faith is the true faith. I'm also convinced that Jesus is the truth and the Savior of this world. Thus, the Bible is the Word of God. The biblical teaching gives clear answers about Jesus and the way of salvation is described clearly in the Bible. A book which I recommend you to acquire and study is the book I've written and mentioned in the beginning, Ask Your Muslim Friend. This book has three main parts. First, Islamic teaching. Secondly, Christian answers to Muslim objections from a biblical point of view. Thirdly, practical encounters with Muslims. In addition, I also recommend the following books. First, Can We Know the Truth? This book explains the similarities, but also the difference between the two faiths, Christianity and Islam. Secondly, Illustrations, Parables, Stories. This booklet contains many practical stories showing the difference in Christianity and Islam. These literatures are available in many different languages. You find them on our website. We strongly encourage you to subscribe to our lectures and acquire our literature. 
If you have any questions or if you need a Bible, please get in touch with us. See you soon again. Good day and God bless you.